Do example four, you know, if you watch one of the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like if you want to, if you watch either like section, I think section one, this class, section one, I covered all of the examples in section one. That's the uh, 310 spot on uh, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you're interested in example four, you want to see me work it out, look there. But I think we're running short on time. I want to make sure I do this one in class. So minus 6x, um, and I have minus 11 here, but I need to make that a plus 11. Otherwise, it would end up meeting, it w I would end up needing a shift of 20. And um, so because I changed that to plus 11, it means that the, um, like step three is not right. Okay. Okay, so for a parabola, one of the things we're going to learn going forward is to understand how to graph a parabola. Completing the square, again, is a tremendously useful bit of algebra. It really, if you think about it, will reveal what the parabola looks like. So I'm going I'm to chase down that idea in more, in more in, of its entirety in a different lecture, but this is just an isolated example of that idea. So here, complete the square. We have x minus 3 squared, right? Minus 3 squared, which is 9, plus 11. And so what we have is x minus 3 squared plus 2, okay? And so what's, what's going on here? I'll draw, the I'll draw the steps, right? I think I can do this in three steps, right? So we start with y equals x squared. What's that look like? That's just this guy, right? Then I shift three units to the right. So that's like this, right? So my vertex is now at 3, 0. It was originally at 0, 0, right? And um, then I shift up 2. So So there you go. Completing the square actually pretty much tells us how to shift the standard parabola at the origin to get the transformed parabola by doing a vertical and a horizontal shift. Yeah. Now, of course, you might have a parabola that opens down or something. Then you'd have, you know, a, a, a reflection over the x-axis, right? We could talk more about that. Um, but so the final example here <coughs> is, any questions about this one? Hmm. All right. So my next example here, example six, erase this here. Are we, am I okay to erase, or? Okay. <coughs> so the one I skipped, example four, had a stretching. When you've got a stretching problem, really, this template in some sense is not ideal. Really, I mean, you almost, for stretching, I, I feel like you need um, a graph paper. You need, a, you need more of a sense of scale to properly appreciate stretching or compressing. Um, so that's kind of the case for this example here because this involves either a stretch or a compress depending on how you want to look at it. Um, all right, so like this formula, we can rewrite as one plus absolute value of two times parentheses x minus three halves, right? And you can either leave the two inside like that or I'm gonna bring it outside because I like to think about vertical stretching more than I like to think about horizontal compressing. I, don't, I can just, vertical stretching for me makes more sense. Personally, that's just how I'm wired. Um, so there we go, that's the formula. Yep. Are you just 
Well, um, I'm looking for something that's close to the absolute. My basic function is absolute value of x, right? So I need something that I can see coming from that. So I'm, I want to make an x appear. So I factored the 2 out to start with. So factoring 2 out leaves me this minus 3 halves here, like that. And then property of absolute values, if you've got 2 times stuff, that's equal to the 2 times the absolute value of stuff. So that's just property of absolute value. You can pr pull the 2 out of the absolute value. Um, so then, for this one, you want to keep track of three points because um, you, you know you want some sense of scale. So I'll track three points, and um, so we have y equals absolute value of x. It's going to look like this. All right, so these points one one and minus one one. All right, I'm just going to track those two points. I find in the origin. My next move is to shift it three halves to the right. Okay, so that makes zero zero move over to uh, one point five comma zero, and this point would then be add three halves, which is one point five. So I get uh, two point five one, and this point over here. I haven't done it very good. That point would be um, 0 0.5 comma 1. So I'm adding 3 halves is 1.5. If you add 1.5 to minus 1, you get 0.5. If you add 1.5 to 1, you get 2.5. Look at that. All right, next, I'm going to stretch by 2. So this is the thing we haven't done yet today in any of these examples. So how do you stretch? Basically, we multiply the y by 2. So 2.51 shifts to 2.52. Um, so it's like here. And 0.51 shifts to 0.5. So it's like here-ish. So something like that. So you, I mean, my limited accuracy graph here, but again, graph paper would be better in this problem, especially because of the scale. And um, and then finally, we do what? Add, shift up one, right? I'll move my axis over here. Shift up one, moves my the v. In the, in the graph, like here, uh, 1.51, 1, and then we go up. So those points are still, well, 2.53 now, and 0, uh, well, excuse me, 1.53. And here you were looking at y equals to 1 plus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 halves. So in summary, when you have like a multiplication, it does require a little bit more effort to really do it properly, right? And also when there's a replacement of x with minus x, you gotta kinda be careful with those. I think reflections across the, the, uh, the y-axis and like stretching, these are the hardest ones in these. Um, I think the other, the other like just horizontal or vertical shifts, I think these are comparatively speaking easier, right? But anyway, that's it. So. I hope this made sense. Next time, we're going to look at how we can use factoring, right, to understand how to graph polynomials, things like that. So um, I may not be following the actual order of the book exactly, but I will follow my heart. That's okay with you guys. That may result in me, like, shifting homework dates back.